Hello, and welcome back to the Wizard's Den. Uh, my name is Alonso, I also known as Free to Play Devotee, and I'm here building a popper deck uh, for our stream tomorrow. This is the second of the deck, and probably the last one of the night. And so what we are building now is Slivers. Slivers is one of the more powerful, I will say, of the aggro decks. Definitely not the most consistent win rate, actually. Um, in my opinion, but uh, Popper has changed a lot in, since my time, and Slivers have become a tricolored uh, behemoth now, so it definitely could be a whole different scheme. So, what are Slivers? Well, Slivers, in a nutshell, are creatures that benefit each other. They're a hive mind. So, for those of you who don't know what Slivers are, in particular, they love to do things where they just buff each other's slivers. And it's usually buffing all slivers, but the newer slivers, as you can see here from Ma Magic 2014, uh, benefit only your slivers. Just made math easier. Now, again, for those who don't know, Popper is, of course, a commons-only format, so we won't be using some of the more broken slivers in the world, um, such as harmonic sliver or things like that. But... We will be playing with a good number of slivers here and just kind of showing the powerhouse that we hope to bring to the field tomorrow. So, without further ado, let's get started. And what we start off with? Well, we start off actually with one of the... Well, let's just start with the foundation of the slivers. So, yes, we'll start with predatory. If I can spell predatory. Predatory. Sliver. So, Predatory Sliver is one of the more modern slivers, and it only gives your slivers you control plus one plus one. One relevant note here is that unlike most lords or creatures that give a benefit to um, your creatures, it actually affects itself. Usually it's other sliver creatures you control, but this one is sliver creatures you control, because slivers are all about that equality. <clears throat> so let's see. Apart from that, we'll try a Sinew Sliver, which I think is the white one. It is. So Sinew Sliver is a time shift run from the um, time spiral block, which means that it's what if magic went a different way. And it is a white version of a sliver that we're going to talk with in a second. And this one gives all slivers plus one plus one. Again, that's all slivers, including your opponent's slivers. So in a dual sliver matchup, it's quite interesting. Uh, let's see. I think Virulent Sliver is the sliver that we want. Nope. That is a Poison Sliver. We'll talk about that in a sec. Let's get the Powerhouse Slivers out here first. Heart Sliver? Nope. Uh, Muscle Sliver. <laughs> Obviously Muscle Sliver. See? Uh, they assume that I know. I don't know. Muscle Sliver is the, one of the original slivers you can tell by that old <coughs> art. And it is another, all slivers get plus one, plus one. As you notice, all these slivers so far are all plus one, plus ones. I mean, one ones. They just get bigger because of their, their kind of aura effects. All right, so those are the big ones. Let's get another weird one in here. So, plated sliver, which is not Zahar the Exemplary. There we go. <clears throat> plated sliver is another old sliver from Legions, and this one is a one mana, rather everyone else was two mana, sliver, and it gives all slivers plus zero plus one. So when this enters the battlefield, it's just a one, two, but it helps buff other slivers up. So for example, if you had this sliver, and then you played a muscle sliver, predatory sliver, a sinew sliver, then the plated sliver will become a two, three, which is dope. And why won't it let me go back to that? There you go. Plated sliver. So it mostly is just there kind of as a one drop to get a little aggression going, but also is very helpful against decks that want to burn it. So like Lightning Bolt or even um, other minus one, minus one effects, minus X, minus X effects from black. This card allows you to get out of that range much quicker, which is very, very crucial. So we'll put four of them there. Okay. And those are the big buff slivers. So those are really what we need to deal with there. Uh, let's try the alternative. Now, nah, let's do more aggression. So Sidewinder Sliver. So Sidewinder Sliver gives all slivers flanking, 
which means whenever a creature without blanking would block a sliver, that blocking creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. This does not stack, so multiple Sidewinder slivers do not actually give benefit of more flanking. If it was something like flanking one, then it could do that. But this is flanking, so it's just the state of having flanking. So if you have flanking, you have the flanking effect against creatures without flanking. So that's that. But it is, again, kind of one of those one-mana drops that can get buffed up by other creatures, and this makes combat really difficult. For example, one of the old terrors of the format, uh, fairies, they can't block Sidewinder Sliver because their creatures will automatically die. And other types of uh, decks definitely do fear it. It has a big potency to it. So, Sidewinder Sliver, it's a thing. And we do it four times. All right, uh, what else we got? Let's go the, no, nah, we'll do the alternative wind condition in a second. So what do we do with that tricolor that I was talking about? Well, that tricolor that I was talking about actually gives a big buff to the combat advantage of these slivers. So first and foremost, we have a heart sliver, which is a two mana one one without any buff effects. It's not like the other lords so far. Um, instead, it gives your sliver creatures haste. Now, why would this matter? I'm going to show you. But it mostly ma it big thing that matters is that oftentimes you place a lord, and your whole board gets like, oh, plus six plus six or plus eight plus eight, and you can't attack because your sliver that you just played doesn't have haste, so it's not a profitable attack. It doesn't give it's still a profitable attack, I should say, but it's not as potent. Whereas heart sliver allows a newfound lord to just go like, hey. Let's party. And then it goes in and parties. So Heart Sliver really is an interesting one-of, just to kind of add that strength to the deck. Now, another thing that it does, though, actually, is helps power out the Gem Hide Sliver much quicker. So what is Gem Hide Sliver? Gem Hide Sliver is your fixing. So we also have some land fixing, but Gem Hide Sliver was the way we originally did fixing in this deck, really. Um, Minus a moment where he had a dirty little card called Alkram's Astrolabe, but we don't talk about that. So, this gives all slivers tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Again, this is just for... It's a, an ability that actually stacks, it does stack, but it doesn't allow your slivers to untap or tap at the same time to create multiple mana. So, Gem Hide is just kind of like one of those things where you just run out a bunch of slivers really quickly. And with Heart Sliver, that means that other slivers into the battlefield can tap immediately to unload your hand. So we do a 4 of of Gem Hide, which again is just a silly little 1-1, one, one, unfortunately. Now, let's get the real deal with these what these red cards. Why are we getting them in here? First and foremost, Hunter Sliver. Hunter Sliver is an old card. Again, back in Legions, um, where Slivers came a thing. And Hunter Sliver gives all Slivers Provoke. Old mechanic word. But those of you who watched the previous video, um, Snubhorn Fun, know what Provoke means. Don't wait. All right, for everyone else who actually just stayed here and watched the show. Um, so S Hunter Sliver is gives to provoke which means that it may choose a creature that an opponent controls untap that creature and that creature must block a fable now why would you do that why wouldn't you just go for the face well maybe you would but sometimes there are life gain creatures especially in decks like elves which you really need to kill because this race is not in your favor oddly enough which is odd for slivers so these beefy slivers which are usually like two threes three threes three fours they just run right over and completely obliterate anything in their path. So that is fantastic. Then we have the alternative win condition, which is very crucial in a format which has uh, flicker effects that lock out the game and prevent you from dealing combat damage. Because slivers, they needed combat damage. There's no way to win if there was no combat damage. And then Modern Horizons became a thing and created, not downshifted, created Blade Black Slipper. So, what is Blade Black Sliver? Well, first and foremost, it has no ability. It's just a 2-2, which in and of itself is unique. But, if you're Hellbent, which means you have no cards in hand, 
Then, it gains the ability that all sliver creatures you control, you control because again, more modern templating, have this creature deals one damage to target player or a planeswalker. There are no planeswalkers at common, but there are players. And so what you do, if someone's locking you out of combat, you play the Blade Black Sliver, have a bunch of like eight slivers on the field, just raring to go, and then all of a sudden you go... And over a series of two turns, that should about defeat them. There's a card in our format called Snubhorn Dignitary, which I'm not seeing as much as I used to, which makes me curious. Oh, not so. Stonehorn Dignitary. Sorry. See? Reference. I love Snubhorn. Snubhorn, leave me alone. Snubhorn Dignitary, uh, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent skips his or her next combat phase. What people do is that they bounce the seed back into their hand or exile it and have it return to the battlefield, more likely. When they do this, the next combat stack will be blocked. Now, the problem with this, it stacks. So, let's say you have a Snubhorn Dignitary. It enters the battlefield. One combat blocked. Okay, so you go to the next combat step, and whoop! Okay, now you can attack. Great, fair card. You have a Snubhorn Dignitary. Okay. Now, I am going to bounce Snubhorn Dignitary and replace Snubhorn Dignitary. Okay. So, now, there are two counters saying that you cannot deal combat damage. So, what happens then is that the first combat, combat step, you remove one of those little um, prevention ideas, basically. There's no actual counters, but remove them. Then, that means that you can't attack that turn. Great, skipped it. Now, you're going to have to wait another combat to remove this one, which gives your opponent... Two turns in order to find another way to bounce Snubhorn, Stonehorn Dignitary and another way to just gain life and go off with a combo. Now why this is problematic is that flickering, the effect of at instant speed, or not as necessarily, but usually, um, taking a creature and exiling it and returning it to the battlefield is a very efficient way to prevent people from killing Snubhorn Dignitary or preventing it from being played. So, Snubhorn Dignitary effectively, if you, so let's say we were back at that two um, stop instance. Well, let's say I went to destroy it, because I'm a good magic player and I want to play magic. They flicker it. You just gave them another combat step where they can avoid you. Snubhorn Dignitary, very good card, but not good against Blade Black Sliver. So, sorry for the tangent, let's keep going. The good news is that was most of the deck. Now we pretty much just swing right into lands and spells. So let's do spells because they're more interesting. <laughs> interesting. They're exactly what they are. There is no pump. There is no protection. You just keep overrun the board. So why anyway was another Modern Horizons invention, which was a very powerful card which allows you for two mana to reveal the top four of your library choose creatures. I mean, you could choose lands, but choose creatures. And then all cards that are not of the chosen type, all the cards that are of the chosen type, you can add to your hand, and the rest in the graveyard. Actually, it's not may, you must. Well, that's an interesting little bit of text. Now, before that, um, we had a downshift, which was very powerful. Lead the Stampede, which was an uncommon, but... It became a common, and what it does is you were, look at the top five. You may reveal any number of creatures from among them and put those cards in your hand. All of the cards go at the bottom of your graveyard, bottom of your library in any order. Very different than Winding Way, which play very different decks. Um, but Lead the Stampede it digs a little deeper, and that one extra card can be very valuable. Some people cut Lead the Stampede I, or reduce it in this deck. I definitely do not because I believe that your opponent will definitely remove your spells, your creatures, and so you need to get more uh, fuel to the fire. Then from there we put our lands. There's going to be a few more lands than the last time. So first and foremost is an Ash Baron. Now an Ash Baron, two of, is going to be just a land cycling. So basically, it can be a land if you really need it to be, and slivers aren't very mana intensive, so you can actually choose just to play it if you really need to get like a gem home palm sliver on the battlefield so that you can start activating mana. So it's doable, but usually you're gonna basic land cycling, which means you 
Pay the land cycling cost, one generic, any mana. Discard it from your hand and search your library for a basic land card and put it into your hand. Boom! You get any type of land you want, such as one of seven forests. And you might ask why I'm not, do why I'm not doing snow forests. It's because I'm not a fool. Uh, you might do your single mountain. You might do your Seven of Planes. It all depends on exactly what you need. And the reason we do this kind of split in, is because you don't really ever want to have two mountains in your hand. Because really, you don't play these guys, the Heart Sliver, the Blade Black Sliver, or the, um, dang it, Hunter Sliver, which is not here. Junter Sliver. Mm. You don't play them turn one, you wait till the very end. So there's plenty of time to get a gem hide sliver or to get the cards that you need in order to cast it. So you really just want it later. But you definitely do like the one drop white cards such as plated sliver or uh, sidewinder sliver. Uh, and the greens are just very powerful. Now, I did forget actually a card and that is my fault. Those of you who are yelling at the screen the whole time, I apologize, I'm here for you now. So. What if you really want to just like go super hard and kill them very quickly, or maybe they gain too much life? Virulent Sliver. So, Virulent Sliver gives all slivers poisonous one. Now, notice the one. What this means is that if someone else gets in another poisonous one, that's a different instance of poisonous. So, I'm not going to get too much into the magic ease, which is its whole own legal language, but the shorthand version is, is that if there are two virulent slivers, then each of the virulent slivers and all other slivers on the battlefield have poisonous one twice. So whenever they deal damage to an opponent, they will deal that combat damage, and they will also simultaneously put a poison counter on that player. That player then, if they ever have 10 poison counters, will lose as a state-based action. This is a great way to go on lifelink, and it's a great way to get underneath uh, life gain or combo decks very quickly because it effectively doubles your damage, especially if you have a couple of them. So that's all 28 slivers. No, I'm missing four. Blade Black, Gem Hind, Heart, Hunter, Muscle, Plated, Predator, Sidewinder, Sinew, and Virulent. Sidewinder, Sinew, Virulent. Oh, I haven't added them yet. I never said I was good at playing this game. Anyway, so that's that. That is 53 cards. We need three more lands. What lands will we put? New lands. Particularly the Thriving Grove. What is the Thriving Grove? It is a card from Jumpstart, which was just a pretty interesting multiplayer format, but since they printed cards that allowed for more mana fixing, it was actually something that we could use for Popper. Now, when it enters the battlefield, you may choose a color, other than green. Won't let you choose green twice. We baby proofed it. And this will allow you to, cap, to tap this land for either that color or green, because it's a grove and it's naturally green. They have a full cycle of this for all five types of lands, allowing for many different combinations. But that's the basics there. That's 60 cards. Um, now, we will go into the sideboard, which... It's pretty standard, it's nothing to write home about, but it is interesting to deal with three cards instead of one cards like I usually three colors instead of one color like I usually do. So, what will we put in there? Well, first and foremost, we will find a way to deal with decks that lock you out of the game. Uh, so Blade Black Sliver is there deliberately to deal with um, Snubhorn Dignitary, Stonehorn Dignitaries and the like. So we add an extra two in the sideboard. Uh, in addition, we have Crimson Acolyte. Now, Crimson Acolyte is there specifically to protect cards, my creatures from red wipeouts. Web is very good at killing my creatures. And with uh, Fiery Cannonade, which deals two damage to each non-pirate creature, which these are not pirates, it's very difficult for me to protect my creatures sometimes because I don't run things that are not creatures. I run eight cards that draw creatures, so I really go creature heavy in my answers. So I put one in there, and I think we're going to have an interesting new card here because of this. 
Uh, but we'll do that in a minute. Lone Missionary is there specifically for burn. My slivers don't really, in my understanding, have a life gain option, so you really need the Lone Missionary in order to gain that life. Enters the battlefield, gains four life. It's a 2-1. It does what it does. Not a horrible aggression, but it doesn't get any buff from the slivers. But you can find it using your search effects, so your draw effects, so that's good. Obsidian Acolyte, our good old friend. Now, Obsidian Acolyte is exactly the same as Crimson Acolyte, but for black. Protection for black. And again, protection means that you cannot, the protected thing can't be the target of, can't be enchanted by, can't be equipped by, can't be dealt damage by, and cannot be blocked by things of that color. So, this is extremely good against, again, Cast Down, which is a card that is very popular in our format, and it just kills creatures. Literally, two mana kill a creature. That's basically what it says. And so, Obsidian Alkalite allows me to get around that. And it itself is not very powerful, but it will allow my more power needed slivers to survive. Now, it's difficult because it does cost a lot of white, so whenever you put the Acolytes in, make sure that you get heavy in on getting those planes when you're searching for lands. You might want to do it over reds, even. Uh, mountains. Okay, so then we also have Sentinel Sliver. Sentinel Sliver is really in there for the aggro matchups. It's a 2-2, the creature, the second one of its kind after uh, Blade Black Sliver, even though this came well before it. And Slivers, our control have, I control have Vigilance. This is great against the Sliver matchup, but it's more importantly great against the aggro matchup, the tempo matchup, because they, people don't want to tap down um, and leave themselves wide open to a counterattack. And Sentinel Sliver prevents you from doing that and makes it so that you basically swing in every turn without any concern, just with pure reckless abandon. So Sentinel Sliver, surprisingly good, and I did put it over the Reaching Sliver, uh, which might be a mistake of mine, but I just believe the aggression on the ground is more what I need than blocking things in the air. Then we have our good old Standard Bearer one more time. Standard Bearer, of course, is an effect that allows me to do really well against Boggles, which enchant a creature that I can't deal with, as well as it goes really well against... Um... Oh, I can't think of it now. See, look at me now. Look at me now, Dad! Mono Green Aggro. I've done this two videos in a row now. That's my deck. That was the first time I top one. Oh my god. Anyway, putting that in there, two of it. And fun fact, it does not affect gem blood. Interfere with blade black sliver. Because this can only target players or planeswalkers, not creatures. This cannot be targeted by that ability. So your whole deck is not affected by standard bearer, which is great. Now, flaring pain is necessary to prevent uh, combat prevention, damage prevention. It's kind of just a hoser. It's something that can be put in the graveyard by Winding Way, because remember, Winding Way puts non-creature or land, if anyone you chose, creature, in the graveyard. So this stops damage prevention, and it can be cast by flashback, from your graveyard at instant speed. So anytime you can pay one red and cast this card from your graveyard, allowing you to go straight in for the kill. Uh, I just like it. I like playing, playing, and I think it works really well with the synergy here. So I really wanted to keep it in there. So I'm at 11 now. There's a new card that I want to use. Masked Vandal. So Masked Vandal... When it enters the battlefield, I may exile a creature card from my graveyard. If I do, I can exile target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. Very powerful against certain decks that will try to fight me. Very good against stopping um, certain Tron decks that really need the land filter. Very good against um, blue, white, black pestilence decks, which need pestilence or pristine talisman in order to keep their life above. Um, and it is just good against some aggro decks decks who you need enchantments to put on it's good against a number of things so i have three open spaces that used to be held for prismatic strands um, but i think i'm going to put masked vandal in there for now because it is good and this allows me 
to actually have all creatures in my sideboard. Minus um, the one, which apparently I didn't put. Oh, I put it in the wrong place. Minus the Flaring Pain. Flaring Pain is the only non-creature spell in my graveyard. Ah, sideboard. Everything else is creatures. Layback, Crimson, Lone, Masked, Obsidian, Sentinel, and Standard. Now, I over glossed the Mass Vandal. So, Mass Vandal, good, great. And I mean, we have a lot of creatures here who are on slivers who are just very powerful. Mass Vandal, though, has Changeling, if you see there. What this means is that it is every creature type. So, it is a sliver, it is a beast, it is a dinosaur, it's a fairy, it's a pirate relevant for pyroclasm uh it's a very powerful card and before we got cast down there were certain removal spells that would have just hated this card but we don't live there anymore so this is fine uh, and i think that it should be very good um because it just removes spells very effectively now i have one too many sideboards so i'm going to take it down to three but and because you have to exile a creature card from your graveyard to make this work it's not always going to go off, but all this fails is a 1-3 sliver, which is not the worst thing in the world. So, all in all, not bad. So, that again, everyone, was the slivers plan. So, we're going to create the deck now, save it up. We're going to say, popper, slivers, aggro, and we'll name it... Sliver slide. I don't know. So that is it, ladies and germs. It is officially late here. And I think that I need to get some rest. But I will see you all later on. And it's today, the 5th of dang it, February. We'll be doing some games with some of these decks. Thank you so much for watching. And I will talk to you soon. Bye!